From timber and flax and rushes, the Maoris and later the first settlers in New Zealand built simple shelters. The wealthier settlers often brought materials and fittings for their houses with them and with the good traditions of Georgian architecture, built homes that most of us would be pleased to live in today. This house built by Busby at Waitangi in 1833 was restored in 1934. One of the architects was Mr. W.M. Page. Busby's house even today would be a good house to live in. And there were others like it built at that time. The mission house at Tauranga was completed in 1847 and has been perfectly preserved by its present owner, Miss Alice Maxwell. This is also a good house by modern standards. Unfortunately, these fine houses were ideals that few could achieve. Most families could not build anything more than simple huts of rope or timber or sods, or, in some cases, clay. These clay huts were very successful. Some are still lived in today. Their simplicity and grace are the result of their builders having little time for fanciful decoration. Then, slowly, New Zealand began to prosper. As some settlers made money, so they wished to have larger homes. In some cases, they wanted people to know how much better off they were than their fellows. So they built large, pretentious houses that were often made to resemble something they were not. Houses were small imitations of castles and eastern temples. Poorer people followed the trend and put false fronts on their houses to make them look bigger. Wood was made to look like stone and cut out wooden scrolls and ironwork were added for no real purpose except to make the house look more elaborate. We still have many examples of what houses looked like at the turn of the century. Inside, they had narrow, dark passages, and the base room and the drawing room faced the street, even if there was no sun on that side of the street at all. It was more important to be conventional than to be comfortable. Later, we became modern and had equally complicated and meaningless designs with lots of ornamentation. But because we used straight lines, we thought it gave us a right to laugh at the Victorians. I'm afraid none of these so-called improvements have given us the simplicity repose and grace the houses that had been built 100 years before. But some people did have good homes. Houses that weren't modernistic or period or quaint, but that faced the sun and suited the climate and didn't pretend to be anything else but good common sense houses for New Zealanders to live in. But we hadn't enough of them. We hadn't enough of any sort of house even the old, uncomfortable ones. We had people crowded up in old, out-of-date houses in busy streets. A nation's prosperity isn't measured in exports and show and false fronts. It's in the way people live and in how much sun they get, where the kids grow up and in how the sanitation works. Forty thousand families living in houses that should have been pulled down, living in rooms and flats, wherever they could find a roof over their heads. Sometimes several families in one house. Forty thousand families in 1935. As economic conditions improved, they looked for better accommodation. Young people who had been living with their parents wanted their own homes. But New Zealand was house hungry, and young people didn't find it easy. To build a house would cost, say, 1,600 pounds. I presume you haven't that amount in cash? 
Well, most of us haven't. You could borrow the money on mortgage by obtaining either a private loan, a building society loan, or a state advances loan. And what, uh, what cash would we need to have? Well, for what you want, you could manage on, say, 200 pounds. 200 pounds? But we haven't got that much money. We've only about uh, 100 pounds. And with the baby coming, there'll be all I don't see how you could manage with less. You'd have to buy a section. But with the baby, we'll have to have some way to live. It's very difficult, isn't it? I don't know. You might find a builder who has built a house on spec. They sometimes build four or five at a time. He might sell you one on a small deposit. I really can't suggest anything else. If you hadn't the deposit, you couldn't buy, you couldn't build. You had to rent. Rents were high and houses were short. You took what you could get. One room's no place for a baby, but it's a roof, isn't it? It's a dining room, it's a kitchen, it's a nursery, and a front hall, and a laundry, and a playroom, and a living room. It's a room. You'll take it? Yes, you'll take anything when you're house hungry. Don't be fussy, it's a roof over your head, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 